Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 might just be my favorite MCU film, if not at least within my top five. But it is a lot to deal with. And that's not some kind of trigger warning, it's just a statement on my part. And my name's Josh Taylor, this is Modern Mouse, and I actually want to start a discussion about whether or not movies like Guardians of the Galaxy 3 should have trigger warnings. Why or why not? Someday, I'm going to make great machines that fly. And me and my friends are going to go flying together into the forever and beautiful sky. If it's not my favorite film, the Guardians trilogy is certainly my favorite set of films from Marvel because they've had the biggest emotional impact on me. And throughout its entire run, I can't help but think that Rocket Raccoon has been my favorite character from these films. Since the first film, he's been complex, a criminal on the run. He's a hardened hero that's difficult to get close to, a tough nut to crack some might say, but underneath that hard crust is a soft, loving character with an upsetting backstory. And that's where James Gunn and crew decided to set their third and final installment of the Guardians trilogy, or at least with all of this crew together at once. Rocket Raccoon's story is about being experimented on. We knew that from the original film back in 2014, but the extent of those experiments hadn't really been addressed until Volume 3. As a director and writer, James Gunn wasn't shy in both telling and showing us what the High Evolutionary was looking to accomplish. There are multiple instances in Guardians 3 where we see these animals getting harmed, turned into monsters, and just trying to survive on the High Evolutionary's base or ship or whatever that place is. In flashbacks, we get to meet a younger Rocket as he makes friends with the other experimented on animals. All great nods to the comics where Lila was his love interest and he had a sidekick that was a walrus. But here, we see these animals getting taken apart and put back together again over and over. As someone watching these scenes, they feel torturous, cruel, and they play heavily on the heartstrings. That's why it's so euphoric to see these heroes prevail at the end of the day. Sure, there are casualties, but those are the stakes that we're playing with, and the higher the stakes, the more satisfying the ending becomes. I ended up seeing this movie opening night, and I had a blast, but then stumbled upon something I didn't expect. Online discourse stuttered up about how Guardians of the Galaxy 3 should have a trigger warning for animal cruelty, and this wasn't necessarily a major debate, but it was something that I did start seeing. And I want to say up front that I totally respect anybody's decision to know what they're getting into before they actually get into it, but I don't know if a trigger warning would have actually hurt or helped this film, or your reaction to it as a viewer, unless you just weren't going to go see this film, and in that regards, why would a studio try and let you know that you shouldn't come and see their movie? I'm also not saying that you should be forced to sit down and watch your traumas play out on screen. I think that there's a larger, nuanced conversation to have here. Let me expand this conversation away from Guardians of the Galaxy for a minute. For years, there have been different types of formats for warnings, like the MPAA, where you have G, P, G, R, etc. The same goes for music and television, but it's been a lot more recent that people have wanted to know more about the media that they're consuming before going into it. To be fair, I found myself impacted by media. It wasn't that long ago that I actually had a severe panic attack watching a TikTok video where a woman was yelling at her husband. It impacted me so much that I actually had to lay down. And when I went to go talk to my therapist later that week, yes, I have a therapist, I think we should all be in therapy, but when I went to talk to my therapist later that week, this was the first thing I decided to bring up. And we ended up talking through it. And through therapy, as well as my own self-reflection, I worked through those feelings and I came out the other side better. And I totally understand why anybody wouldn't want to have a major panic attack at a movie theater. If a 45 second TikTok left me bedridden, how would anyone feel after a two and a half hour movie in a public space? On the other hand, I feel like trigger warnings really aren't preparing anyone for what's to come. They're more of a flag to avoid that piece of media. And while I can certainly see why somebody might want to wait to watch Guardians 3 at home, at their own leisure, to be able to pause the movie whenever they need to, I also don't think that a movie like this, or any movie with serious topics, should be avoided. Because then you're only allowing those topics to go 
unchecked. It just doesn't help address the issues that somebody might have. And I know that there's a bigger story here, especially in America, about the state of mental health care and the cost of it and classism, but I'm not here to talk about that because we just don't have the time to do it. Putting all of that aside, I do think that media can and does play a role here that's more helpful than harmful. Is seeing animal abuse play out on screen upsetting? Yes, of course, as is gun violence and sexual assault and a slew of other topics. But not addressing any of these topics on a personal level, if they're a problem for you, can cause a lot more pain in the long run. Obviously, in order to deal with these kinds of things, like myself, I think you should talk to a therapist or go talk to your doctor, but, and hear me out, I think that media can play a part in helping you work through these ideas. I know what's happening on screen isn't real, which makes it easier to cope with. The raccoon is completely computer generated, as are his experimented on animal friends. Nothing is going to leap off the screen and get me personally involved. Even in my situation with the spousal abuse video, I found myself able to work through it faster because it didn't really involve me. I wasn't in the room where that happened. I could talk about it with somebody or reflect on it personally and work my way through it. Maybe you've had a pet die recently, or maybe you've seen animal cruelty happen in real life, and watching a film like this might conjure up bad memories. I know that everybody is different, and while I'm here questioning the need and desire for trigger warnings, I'm not outright saying that we don't need them or that there's not a great use for them, but I do think that some people are using them the wrong way. Rather than finding a way to talk through these topics in a safe way, people would rather just avoid them, allowing this feeling to sit and fester and get worse. But maybe there's a solution here. Maybe it's time to reevaluate things like the MPAA ratings, giving more details about the movies that we're going to go see, rather than just age restrictions for those movies. I don't know, I'm really just kind of working through this myself, and honestly, more or less I'm posing the question to you whether or not we should have more trigger warnings, and how or when they should come up. All I am sure about though, is that Rocket Raccoon is still one of my favorite Marvel characters, and I absolutely enjoyed seeing him rise up from such a tragic backstory, in order to become the savior of the galaxy and dance alongside his adopted family. Thank you.